This week, we're going to talk about nuclear physics. And I'm going to start with some introductions to the idea of radioactivity and radiation. And everything I'm going to demonstrate is stuff which is easily available. Um, I know we're oftentimes worried about radiation, but radiation is part of your life whether you want it to be or not. And I am taking certain precautions as I'm using these things, but there's nothing here which is scary and radioactive. And actually, most of the things here I ended up getting at the uh, secondhand store. So. Um, it's, it's okay. Now I'm going to start by blowing up a balloon. And the reason I'm blowing up a balloon is I'm going to use this to make some static electricity. I'm going to take this balloon and I'm going to use a clip to keep the air from coming out. I'm going to take this balloon, I'm going to rub it on my hair. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm building up some static. Also, probably giving me kind of my hair kind of a nice look. I like to think that in the hairstyle department, I set a certain standard and I strive to maintain that. That's why the life, the title of my autobiography is A Lifetime of Bad Hair Days. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this balloon right over here. It's static charged. It's attracting dust from the air. And it turns out the dust has a special property that we'll come back to. But I'm going to start by looking at this device right here. And this is a smoke detector. And it asks you not to open it. And, and I would encourage you to not open up your smoke detector because inside it, a typical smoke detector, you have a little source here. And this is a radioactive source. And it turns out this is made of an element called americium. Now, it's a man-made element. This is made in nuclear reactors. And the big problem with americium is it's just too big. It's when atoms get bigger than a certain size, the repulsive force of the protons dominates the attractive force between the protons and the neutrons, and the nuclei just fall apart. There is no element with an atomic number bigger than 82 that's stable. The only ones that are found in nature, um, go, the elements found in nature go up to element number 92. Americium is element number 95. It is not found in nature. It's produced by humans in nuclear reactors. So it's a little chunk of americium. And it turns out americium is a really, really strong alpha particle emitter. So it emits these alpha particles. And alpha particles are just helium nuclei. When a nucleus breaks into parts, it kind of like throws off chunks. It break, breaks into smaller pieces. And one really common piece for a nucleus to break into is a helium nucleus. And helium is atomically very stable, but it's also very stable in a nuclear physics sense. So inside here, giant atoms, they're breaking into parts. One of the parts they break into is a helium nucleus, but they're throwing it off at very, very high speed. And because it's moving so quickly, it's got so much energy, it rips electrons off of atoms. It's ionizing, and it's going to ionize gas inside this tube, which is a Geiger tube. And when that happens, you'll be able to hear clicks on the Geiger counter. And you can see this source, this is quite radioactive. This is certainly um, the most radioactive thing that is commonly available is this little thing inside your smoke detector. But it's giving off these alpha particles. The nucleus is too big, breaks apart, alpha particle comes flying off. The range of alpha particles is very short. Watch this. Up here, I'm detecting very few counts. Still not very many counts. I'm starting to detect more and more and more. And then right about here, it goes crazy. And so you can see those alpha particles don't go very far. And if you keep the lid closed, and you have the cover on here, there was a metal cover that we bent back. With that metal cover on here, you're not detecting anything. The clicks that we're hearing is basically the background from the radiation that's in the air. Now, why would you want to have a radioactive material inside your smoke detector? And it turns out you're using the fact that those particles ionize the air. The americium gives off these high-speed helium nuclei. They ionize the air. It's inside a chamber, and there's a current which is flowing through the air. But when smoke particles get in there, they glom on to the ionized particles. They reduce the ionization. You get less current. Less current means there's smoke particles in the air. And where there's smoke, quite possibly, there's fire. And so this is what this device does. It detects smoke in the service of keeping your house safe. And it does that uses, using the ionization. Now, the ionization also is what lets the Geiger counter work. 
And that's also what makes the radiation dangerous because when those radioactive decays happen, it throws out a particle like an alpha particle or a beta particle or a gamma ray. They're very high energy. They're ionizing. They tear electrons off of, off of atoms. They break bonds. It's the ionizing radiation that people are scared of when they think, talk about being scared of radiation. Um, as I say, there is some around all the time. Like right now, I'm getting a certain number of clicks even though this is near no, near no source there's a certain amount of radiation in the air. And where it comes from is radioactive materials in the ground. This is a chunk of rock that I got in western Colorado. And this is chunk of rock. It's uranium ore. It's uranium ore. And uranium is naturally occurring in the soils in our state. There's a fair amount of uranium in the soil in, in Colorado. And so you can pick up rocks um, on the ground that are radioactive. They've got a reasonable amount of uranium in them. And because there's a fair amount of uranium in our soil, we have a fair amount of radioactivity there. And here's one of the properties of radioactive nuclei. When they decay, they don't go away. They turn into something else. And the uranium inside here, when it decays, it turns into things which are actually more radioactive than the uranium was. You have this decay chain where the uranium decays into something which is less stable. And so over time, the rate of radiation could actually increase depending on the sample you have. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things um, that I have th that are radioactive and teach you some things about radiation and radioactive decay as we go. This is just a little clock, and this little clock has hands that when I expose them to ultraviolet light, they light up. And the hands are phosphorescent. And if you take this clock and you charge it up in the light, and then the sun goes down, the hands will keep glowing for some time. But at some point, they stop glowing because you run out of energy. This clock right here was made very similarly, but the hands on this clock are, are painted with the same phosphorescent compound, but they're energized not by light. They're energized by the decay of radium, which is inside the, the, the coating on these hands. And so they're strongly, strongly radioactive. When uranium decays, there's a decay chain, and along the line, it ends up decaying into radium, which is stable for about 1,600 years. But uranium is stable for four and a half, uh, stable for, yeah, like four billion years or so. So the radium is less stable than uranium. And so the uranium decays, it makes radium way less stable the decay rate is much greater. And so a tiny bit of paint right here, tiny bit of paint um, is going to give us a much bigger count rate than a chunk of rock, which has a fair amount of uranium in it, because the radium is significantly more radioactive. It's got a much shorter half-life, and so much higher activity, much higher activity. Now. The other things that I have here are I have a piece of glassware. And this piece of glassware um, I showed in uh, a video last week. It's strongly fluorescent. And people made this glassware fluorescent because it's really, really pretty. And they got that particular color by putting uranium in it. And so this particular piece of glassware was made with uranium. And so it's reasonably radioactive. Not so much, but you can tell there's definitely some counts coming off of this. And people did that just because it was cool. And people were not worried about the fact that it was radioactive. The fact that people didn't worry about radiation until later, uh, uh, until some years after people had started using it, is something I'll talk about in the next video. But people just did this because it's a cool color and it's radioactive and people were not worried about radiation. Now, this piece of glassware gets more radioactive every year. The uranium's decaying, but it decays into stuff which has a shorter half-life. And so it decays into things which are actually have a higher activity. So every year, the activity of this gets higher. And that is also true of these plates I have. I, I always stock up on these plates when I go to a second-hand store. And this plate is glazed with uranium oxide. So this this is a hot source. Um, there's uranium oxide glaze here. 
And people used it because it was a really, really pretty color. People at one point, though it seems unimaginable, thought this color was really cool and wanted it on their kitchen table or not worried about the fact that it was radioactive. And it turns out there was a whole lot of uranium ore around from days when people were hunting for, looking for radium in rocks. That's a point I'll come back to on Friday. But crazy levels of radioactivity here. And every year it gets worse because when it was made, it was just uranium, but now it's uranium plus the decay products of uranium, which are more radioactive than the original sample. Now, at the start of this video, I took this balloon and I rubbed this balloon on my head. So it's got some static electricity. It's been collecting dust in the, from the air. And it turns out there's a fair amount of uranium in rocks in our soil. When the uranium decays, it decays into a series of isotopes. At some point in the decay chain, it reaches radon. Well, radon is a noble gas. The radon percolates up out of the soil, comes into the air. Once in the air, it decays into very short half-life isotopes, polonium, bismuth, et cetera. You can read about it in the textbook. But when it decays into those particles, radon is perfectly happy floating around the room because it's a gas. Polonium? not so much. And so they have a metal atom, which doesn't want to be in the air, clings onto a dust particle. I've collected the dust particles here. And it turns out the dust that I've collected from the air in the room on this balloon is actually measurably radioactive. If I take my balloon and I fold it up and I take my Geiger counter and I put my Geiger counter on top of it, I'm going to get measurable radiation off of this. And this counts that I'm getting here. It's not much, but it's more than the background counts. I can look at the readout and I can see I am getting more than the background counts. What I've done is I've just collected dust from the air and the dust is mildly radioactive because of the decay products of the uranium in our soil. And it's these offspring of the decaying radon, the radon progeny that makes this happen. So radiation is part of your life. Radiation is part of your life, whether you want it to be or not. And so all we're doing is we're demystifying it and we're making it kind of clear. Oh, yeah, check it out. No balloon. I'll put the balloon back. We get an increase in the count rate. That's due to the radioactive particles I've collected on the balloon. But their half-life of those particles is very short. If I let them sit for half an hour, they're mostly gone. Very, very short half-life of the particles on that balloon. So after some time, this won't be scary. This won't be scary anymore. That's a little bit about radiation, radioactivity. That's our first foray into nuclear physics. I'm going to do another video where I talk about some of the other amazing things that I have on my shelves in my office. I've got this amazing collection of radioactive antiques, and it's part of the story uh, 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 of telling the story of radiation through the history of how people viewed it and how people used it over the years. That's coming next.